It is a beautiful morning and it is like 60 something degrees already at eight o'clock in the morning. But it's like really windy. I think it's gusting like 20 miles an hour. And it's supposed to get up to like 72 today. Odie he spent the night on his new side of the fence. And I'm liking this setup much more already. I'm gonna let him out for a little bit and let him run around while I go take care of the other chickens. How you doing, Finn? I'll let you out a little bit later to run around, okay? Finn got his name from the fact that the way his tail is, and I don't know, maybe some chickens had just pulled some tail feathers out or something, but his tail kind of looked like a dolphin fin. So there you go, that's how he got his name. Of course, Oni got his name from the fact that we had put five eggs in the incubator and only one egg actually hatched. So, Oni, Uno, you know. <laughs> Very creative, you know. Nonami got his name from the fact that out of that batch of chickens, he was the only rooster that didn't have a name. And so it actually comes from no name, no Nami. <laughs> Glenn named him. <laughs> Which is kind of funny to me because Glenn was telling me, you gotta quit naming the chickens. And yet he goes and names the no name chicken. That don't sound fair. You see how they'll fight through the fence? That's another reason as to why I won't let Uni out when I'm not out here to supervise because there are times where roosters will fight so much through the fence that one of them can get severely injured. And our young cockerel you can see over right there. <laughs> he is actually already starting to show a little bit of tendency towards fighting and I've even seen him already try to get on one of the ladies. And interestingly, Nonami just went over and pecked him in the head when you would think that maybe that would cause a fight. Actually didn't. I have two tabs today that I'm going to be moving. The first one is this tree here that has buds on it. They're not close to breaking yet at this point, but this has never been a good producer anyway. In fact, we haven't gotten anything out of it for quite a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it since it's got buds on it anyway. And whenever your maple trees get to the point where they have bud break, the sap will get bitter and you won't want to collect the syrup anymore anyway. Nothing. In all honesty, whenever I think we're gonna have wonderful sap flow, we don't. And when I don't expect it, we do. There's actually not that much in there. Technically, on the side of the fence that Uni's on now, if he got up on the deck, he could jump into the other side of the fence. And another reason not to leave him out by himself. This tree is the largest maple that we have tapped, and we've tapped this for a number of years. And for some reason, this year and last year, it just really has underperformed. This tap over here, the second tap that we did this year, is not really producing anything. So I think one of the problems might be that it might be too close to a couple knots that are on the tree, which if you have a knot on a tree, it's kind of like a scar tissue where you don't really get sap flow through that. I'm going to go ahead and try to move this tap. Another thing that you want to keep in mind when you're retapping a tree is the new tap hole should probably be about four inches to the side and six inches above or below the previous tap hole because every time you tap a tree, when that heals up, that scar that forms there around it, there won't be any sap flow there. In case you aren't aware, as of, I think, late June, the sale of a lot of the, or I don't know, maybe all of the animal over-the-counter antibiotics 
is going to stop. It's going to be become all by veterinary prescription only, which is a very, very sad thing to see. They have their reasons, of course, but it just seems like it's a constant attack on small farms and homesteads because who can af afford oh, a little out of breath? Because who can constantly afford to pay a vet bill all the time? It was here just recently that I had Glenn pick me up some teramycin eye ointment for Uni because him and Nonami had been fighting and he was starting to get an eye infection and I treated it with that and he got better right away. Enough gloom and doom. This tree is a tree that we tapped last year. Uh, this is actually a double tapper, but I'm just gonna do this one tap on it. It is just an absolutely gorgeous day. All right, see how that guy does. It doesn't look like there's anything dripping today. If you wanna know anything else about uh, this big change to the over-the-counter veterinary medicines, I'll leave a link below to the actual information where you can look it all up. In the past, how we have always finished our sap into syrup is by simply just doing a thermometer and spoon test. And I actually have a video on that. I'll link to that in the description. You basically get the sap to be boiling at 219 degrees. And then once the syrup is sticking to the bottom of the spoon and not dripping off, then you can figure you're pretty good to go. And we've done that always in the past and it's worked great for us. But this year we wanted to streamline it a little more and maybe get it a little more accurate. And so we started using a thermometer and a refractometer. I guess it just makes me feel a little more confident that I'm actually getting it to the necessary 66% sugar content as far as storage is concerned. But I will say, even still, just as, as we've always done, we keep our syrup in our refrigerator in sealed mason jars. This is nowhere close right now to being done, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I use the refractometer. Um, so if my temperature right now was reading like 219 degrees and you know I like the way this is looking, I'll scoop up a little bit of this and let it cool down on a spoon and then I just need a couple drops of this on my refractometer and then I'll let that sit for another say 30 seconds and then check to see if the refractometer is reading 66%. If it's reading 66% then I'll go ahead and turn my syrup off, let it cool down just a little bit and then I'll transfer it into mason jars. Another thing to note is that if you don't filter your finished maple syrup, you'll end up with something in the bottom of your jars called maple sand or sugar sand. And you won't find this in any commercial maple syrup products because they remove it. We put it in like coffee or tea and sometimes just eat it straight out of the bottom of the jar. So you can decide whether or not you want that in your jars. One of the things that we've wanted to do for a while is come up with a better system for their food. Right now, we were just using these chicken feeders and putting them on the floor. Um, we didn't wanna like hang them all the way from the ceiling because we were worried that they would swing around too much and spill too much food. But even like this, the chickens are getting their feet on it and kicking a bunch of food out. And we're having a whole bunch of waste with doing it like this. We got one of the wall feeders and we're gonna go ahead and install that today. I'm just doing a piece of scrap board to kind of thicken up back here so it ain't sticking out. Give a little more for the screw to bite into. Perfect. So far I really like it. It, it seems like it's it's well made. What do you think, Oini? Do you like it? 
You don't care? You're not even gonna be eating out of it, Oni. <laughs> you wanna try it? I'll go get some food, Oni. I told you that ain't nothing. The bigger container. Here's a bucket. Come on, Oni, come eat. So try out the new feeder. Come on, Oni. Look in there. These chickens are waiting for us to open the door. <laughs> Go check out your food. <laughs> she acts like she's skeptical to go in there. 